Welcome everyone to Domain and Range from Graph. This is a Khan Academy tutorial. I am Mr. West and let's go ahead and get started. This topic uh, covering domain and range has a lot of misconceptions and students make a lot of kind of simple errors that I'm hoping to correct right here and talk about some common errors and how to watch out for them. So when we're talking about range, this is the first problem here. We're talking about the possible y values. So this is the possible y values. Okay, now when we're talking about the possible y values, we're talking about the lowest y value to the highest y value. Okay, so we always look at what is our lowest possible point, okay, lowest, or our lowest, our lower limit, and then we go to our highest point or our upper limit. When we write it though, okay, so in this case, we're going to look at the graph and we see that it's labeled F. Uh, F. When we're looking for uh, range, it's either going to be like Y like this, or it's going to be F of X. And I like to call it a sandwich. So when I say a sandwich, it means something like this. And it doesn't necessarily have to be less than, it could be less than or equal to like this. So I have two different variations there. And actually there's more, it could be less than or equal to on the left side, and it could be less than on the right side. But I digress. I just want to show you that you're going to put your upper limit on the right. So what color should I use? I guess I'll use green. You're going to put your upper limit on the right and you're going to put your lower limit on the left. Okay, so that's the sandwich method. So low on the left, upper on the right, but this is just in the inequality form. When we're looking at the graph, we're going to look at the lowest possible value and the highest possible value. Okay, so let me, let me just kind of start here with what the correct way is and then what people commonly mess up. So as we're looking at this graph, we see that it starts here, it goes down, then it comes back up, and then it goes up a little bit, okay, and then it ends. What you have to do is you have to go down, okay, I'm going to start where there's nothing, okay, down here there's nothing on the graph. There's nothing, so I know that's safe, so I can move up and I see what is the lowest possible point and I see that it's here, okay. So I draw a line and I see that it touches negative 3. Well, guess what? That is my lower limit. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down for my lower limit. The other thing I'm going to look for is, is it a solid point at negative 3 or is it an open circle or a dotted line? Because if it's an open circle or dotted line, I'm going to be using these symbols here. If it's a solid line or it's a closed dot, I'm going to be using these symbols here. Okay, so less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So I see it's a solid point, so I'm going to make it less than or equal to as I've demonstrated already with my f of x. Okay, now what do I do after this? Well, I'm just going to keep following this line up. So I'm going to go up, 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 okay? Notice how the graph keeps going up until I get to the highest point, and it doesn't go any higher than that, and that's my upper limit. What is that point that it touches? For the y value, okay, we're not interested in the x value for the range. We're only interested in the y value. We're going up and down, and we get to the point 7. So I know my upper limit is 7, okay? Now, is it equal to 7, less than or equal to 7? Yes, it is, because it's a solid point there. Now, what's a common mistake I hear? So actually, let me show you that we're going to choose this answer, okay? So that's going to be our answer. Negative 3 is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to 7. But let me uh, go through a common mistake. A common mistake people do, okay, let me erase, 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 erase. What common mistake people do is they only look at the endpoints. What do I mean by endpoints? Where it starts and where it stops, okay? So that's, that's a common mistake. I, it happens a lot, but you can't just look at the endpoints. It's a big temptation, but you have to look at the lowest possible value. So what a lot of people do is they'll go, okay, here and here. So this is my lower limit is three. Here's my upper limit. It's seven. That's not true. Okay. You don't look at the endpoints. You look at the entire graph. Okay. So the lowest possible point is there. The highest possible point is there. And that's what you do for your range. So we're going to go ahead and check our answer. And hopefully we have a domain question next. Okay. We got domain. This one's actually going to be pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of tricks to this one. But we still have to recognize that domain is dealing with the possible x value. So we have domain, and it's the possible 
x values. Okay, so we're talking about the furthest left it goes. Okay, we're going to start there. And then we're going to talk about the furthest right it goes. Okay, so if we're going left with the x values, we're talking about negative, we're going in the negative direction. If we're going to the right, we're going in the positive direction. This will become our lower limit on the left. And on the right, it's going to be our upper limit. We frame it in the same way that we did the f of x or the y, where we have x is less than and less than, and we put our upper limit on the right. This is the sandwich I like to call, and our lower limit on the left. This, this frames our possible x values. Okay, We have our lowest all the way through our highest, and that's where the graph is. That's what our possible values are. So we're going to look here, and we're just going to look far, far left, and we see that there's empty space over here. Okay, the graph doesn't touch there, so we're going to go to the right until we get to our lowest limit. Aha, I'm going to draw a line here, and we see it crosses on our x-axis, because that's what we're interested in right now with domain. It crosses the point negative 5. So I'm going to write negative 5. Now, again, same thing. We're going to look, is it a closed dot? Is it an open dot? This time it's a closed dot or a solid line, so it can include x. So I'm going to write less than or equal to. Okay, I'm going to keep going to the right. Going to the right, going to the right, going to the right, going to the right. Okay, the graph stops here. Okay, where does it stop? It stops on 5, and it's a closed dot. So I know for my upper limit, it is going to be positive 5. So this one was pretty straightforward, but again, it's the same process, but now we're just kind of switching directions. Domain, again, we're thinking left to right. Range, we're thinking down to up. So I'm looking negative 5 to 5. And we're going to check it. Next question. Okay, range of H. Again, the temptation is to just do the endpoints. You don't want to do that, though. You want to go to the highest and the lowest possible values, okay? Your range is going to be much smaller if you just include those points, okay? Don't just look at the endpoints. Look at the whole graph. So if we're looking at the whole graph, man, now i got to erase that. <laughs> that was dumb. Okay, erase, 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 erase. Race, race, race. I know these little lines are probably bothering you, but I'll do my best. Okay, so we're looking at the lowest possible point. What do we get to? Well, it looks like negative six is our lowest possible point. And then we go up, 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 and we see that it gets all the way to here. What we're looking for are the y values with range. So our lowest possible y value, we got to negative six, and it's a solid line. So we're going to less than or equal to. The graph is h, so again, you can write h of x. Sometimes you'll see it as y, okay? In this case, it's writing it as h of x. So we get h of x, that's what we're going to write. And then we write less than or equal to 1 because it gets to this y value of 1. So we're just going to go here, and it looks like that's our first choice, and we're done. Okay, again, the temptation is to go to the end point. You can't just look at the end points. you got to look at the whole graph. Okay, domain here. Domain is actually usually pretty easier, or not pretty easier, it's just easier. So we are going to start at the left point, negative 7. We go to the right, we get to positive 7, and this one's actually fairly easy. It's just going to be, uh, let me use red, negative 7 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to positive 7. So we're going to look for that answer. Okay, that was our lower limit on the left, upper limit on the right. Check it. Okay, now this one is an interesting one because, because we have the domain of H, okay, and it's all over the place. So what we're doing here is we have several dots, okay? These are all our dots. This is our graph. This is our function. It's a weird function, but this is what it is. We need to consider what are our x values at each one of these. We don't really care about the y values. You can label them if you want, but we don't have to really worry about them. Okay, so what's this point here? This is the point negative 2, comma, and again, you don't really have to worry about the y, but I'm going to list it anyway. This is the point negative 1, comma, negative 2. This is the point 1, and this is comma, what is that, negative 5. This is the point uh, 5, comma, 7. And then this one's 6, comma, 7. 
So what's the range? The range are all the values that are in red here. Those are our X values. That's our domain, but it's not all the values in between. So we're not going to use an inequality because an inequality means that we're talking about all the values between those, including negative 6.5, including 0 0.23. It includes all the values there. If they're just dots, we only can include those dots. So we're looking for those specific values, negative two, negative one, one, five, and six. And that's this, okay? So we're only including those values because it's not a line that includes all the values in between the lower limit and the upper limit. So that's the difference there, that's the distinction. Okay, what is the range? So it's the same thing here. I'm not gonna label all the points. I'm just gonna label the Y values here. So if we're just talking about the range, we're talking about the, the up and down, so the Y coordinate. So the Y coordinate here is negative seven. Okay, then we go up to our next highest, or next lowest, sorry. We get negative four, this one's negative one, this one's three for our Y value, and this one's seven. So again, this is our all our Y values. It's not a continuous line, so we only can include those particular Y values. So they were negative seven, negative four, negative one. It looks like it's gonna be our first choice, option A. The graph is G of X, so we're gonna graph, we're gonna select that, G of X values. Okay, last one, what is the range? Okay, again, we go to our lowest point. Our lowest point is negative nine. Our highest point, don't just go to the end point, don't do that, go to the highest point. So we go from negative nine to negative two. So this is gonna be our answer. There's no open dots there, so this is gonna be correct. And we're done. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it clears up some things on domain and range for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.